Thank you so much, Brother Lobins, for this time of worship. Uh, to our viewers uh, on our online church, uh, the Facebook and uh, YouTube channels, and those who will watch us later, we want to welcome you for our morning service here at Soroti Calvary Chapel. We want to bless the Lord who has enabled us to do these online services because we acknowledge that even in this time of the lockdown, God is still speaking to us. This is the time we need to listen. This is the time we need to hear his voice. We need him more than ever before. So, as we all know that all around us, some of us are still in a shock of this year, 2020. And I want to say, you are welcome to 2020, a year that we have never experienced before. This is a year that has proved to us that we don't know it all. It has proved to us that there's someone greater, there's someone above. It has proved to us that things do not just happen. Things will not continue in the same line as we expect them. I know some of us had so many plans, so many goals, and right now you're thinking of, will I still achieve those plans and goals? And looking at what's happening, especially like for this last week, you hear about riots all over, you hear about um, like here in Uganda, the, the water levels have increased, people's houses being washed away. You hear people dying of hunger, you hear a lot of alarm, you hear this nation is against this nation, you hear so many things and all that the Bible has told us about, they are going to come. And when you start seeing such things, just know that we are in the end times. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And the question for us this morning, hearing about his coming, do you feel excited or do you feel terrified? Let's pray as we begin at this service. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you that you have given us an opportunity to listen to your word. That, Father, despite of the distractions that are around us, despite of the challenges, that, Father, you still put this voice in us to listen to you, to still seek for that voice, to still seek to know your will in these unprecedented times. We want to thank you. We pray that may you speak to us, Lord. Speak to us as your servant is ministering. I pray that King of glory, we will know that perfect plan that you have for us. We want to praise you in Jesus' name. So we want to today to just talk about something that the Lord has been putting upon my heart. Looking at what's happening right now. Looking at what is around us. It makes you wonder what Christianity is all about. Thinking about the end times, thinking about the time when God is finally going to wrap off this world. It reminds me of a farmer who has a garden. It reminds me of a farmer who has planted his garden and it is time to harvest. And of course, when he comes to harvest, he's expecting to harvest something. When he plants his maize, he's expecting to get fruit out of it. And when I look at our lives as Christians, when I look at us being here on earth, knowing that this is not our final destination, it's like we are those plants that are being planted here on earth. And finally, the Father is going to come seeking for fruit. But the question is, 
will we be ready to give him what he intended us for? You know, as we think about the purposes of why we are here on earth, as we think about our obligation as Christians, I believe there is that one thing that each of us as believers in Christ Jesus, there is something God expects out of us. Him having sent his son to die on the cross, to give his life for us, there is that one thing that each of us is expected. God is expecting that thing from us. I know in our Christian life is filled with a lot of things. And I believe sometimes we may miss out that mark, that thing, that main thing that God intended us for. And that's why I want us to take this time to, to search through scripture. Say, what is that thing that if you miss out in this world, you are very sure that God will not be pleased with you. And what is that one thing that if you already did that, God would say, well done, my faithful servant. What is that one thing that if you missed out, however much you have done all the rest, it will be meaningless. And that's what I want us to discover. Because it's, it's dangerous to waste your time here on earth. It's dangerous to spend time and in the end of it all, you don't get it. In the end of it all, you miss the mark. In the end of it all, you don't see, God doesn't see what he intended you for. So Christians, I want us today to, to see the example Jesus gives to us in uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15, Jesus gives an illustration. An illustration of what Christian life should all be about. An illustration that helps us to understand our relationship between God and Jesus Christ and we the believers as we open to John chapter 15 and we read uh, that first verse John chapter 15 verse 1 I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Think about it. God gives us the illustration of the vineyard. And he says he's the vine dresser. Call him the farmer, the one who plants. And we see now that Jesus is the true vine. God planted the true vine and we are the branches. That's something that we see our relationship. We are the branches of the true vine who is Jesus Christ and the father is the vine dresser. But there's just something else we learn from this relationship. That the father or we call him the farmer who has planted his vineyard, there is a purpose for which he has planted it. And that purpose is that the vine, the, the branches, may bear the fruit. You may think about uh, so many reasons why people uh, plant uh, trees like at my home I have a mango tree and this season is a season for mangoes my tree has no mangoes 
I feel disappointed about it. But my tree does not only give me mangoes. It also gives me shade when I'm at my home and I, I feel inside is, I, I just want to feel, to, to sit outside and feel that breath, air. That tree is important. Something else also see that that tree, I've connected uh, a swing for my girls to swing around. So it feels good. And plus, if I want to get firewood, this tree would be very important. And maybe timber. But now, the illustration that Jesus gives to us about the vine is different. The vine has, <laughs> apart from bearing fruit, there is no other importance it has. You can't use its, its uh, branches for anything else. It's not good for wood. Like you want to make, uh, you want to say maybe I'm going to use it as a good for firewood. It's not good. The fire will just devour it. It's not good for building. Maybe you say you want to construct something. You, it will just rot. It's not strong. You can make timber out of it. So for a farmer who plants the vineyard, a vine garden, the only thing he is expecting out of this vine are the fruits. Think about it. If that farmer fails to get those fruits, how does he feel? Think about it. A farmer who has spent time, who has sacrificed to make sure that this vine gives the fruit and he doesn't get it. How does he feel? Feels disappointed. There's disappointment. Ezekiel chapter 15, open with me Ezekiel chapter 15. There is an illustration that Jesus, that God gives us about the nation of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 15. You'll be surprised how God looks at us. God looks at the nation of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 15. We see from verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, how is the wood of the vine better than any other wood? The vine branch, which is among the trees of the forest, is wood taken from it to make any object? I guess by now we already know the answer. Or can men make peg from it to hang any vessel on? Instead, it is thrown into the fire for fuel. The fire devours it, both ends of it, and its middle is burned. Is it useful for any work? And that's, that's the question. Is it useful for any work other than bearing fruit? So, verse 5, Indeed, when it was whole, no object could be made from it. How much less will it be useful for any work when the fire has devoured it and it is burned? Also, when you turn to Isaiah chapter 5, you see how God refers to Israel as a vineyard. God planted this vineyard and is expecting to get fruit out of it. But what does he find? No fruit. And he's disappointed. Because there's nothing else that the vine can give apart from the fruit. That's the purpose for which it exists. Friends, Christians, do you know that there is something for which we exist in this world? 
there's something that when God looks at us, he's saying, this is what I'm expecting from you. This is what I'm expecting from my children. This is what I'm expecting to see them, to see from them. What is that one thing that God is expecting from you? And we have already seen in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, let's go back to our text. John chapter 15. We have already seen that what God is expecting from us is to bear fruit. To bear fruit. John chapter 15, and we are going to read a few verses. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Yes, God is expecting fruit from us. If you are seeking to know God's expectation from you as a Christian, is fruit. Nothing less. He wants fruit from us. And that's the message for us today. That don't be distracted by so many things in this world. Don't be distracted by the things that are walking around. Acknowledge that God is expecting fruit from you. God is seeking for fruit. He's seeking that you may bear fruit. Are you bearing fruit? In such a time when everyone is wondering about tomorrow, I think your question would be, am I bearing fruit? When God comes to take me to be with him, will he find fruit from me? When God comes to his vine, will he enjoy the fruit that, that he has intended us for? You may be there and you are wondering, which is this fruit that me as a Christian I'm supposed to bear? Which is that fruit? Because this is what's happening. To some of us, depending from uh, looking at where we have come from, our backgrounds, we have different understanding of what this fruit looks like. To some of us, this fruit means the spiritual gifts. And that's what we see as most important. When you became a Christian, you ended up looking at these spiritual gifts and you're like, if I can only do this, if I can only be a good teacher of the word, if I can do miracles, if I can do this, you look at the spiritual gifts, you look at those gifts and you are like, I think this is something that is so important for me as a Christian. And yet to others, they look at good works. Yeah. Because you, you feel like, if I can help the poor, if I can give a tithe in church, if I can do this, if I can do this, Wow, I think this is it. This is all that matters. This is all that God is seeking from me. I don't know what is that thing in your life that when God asks you, what did you use your life for that you will present? And that's what I'm talking about. What is that fruit that God is expecting us as Christians to bear. Please, listen to this carefully. It's not that those things are bad. They are not bad at all. Having, exercising those spiritual gifts is not bad. Doing those good things is not bad. We actually are supposed to do them. 
But the fact is, if you are doing them and you are forgetting that bearing that fruit, then you would have wasted time in trying to seek after these things. Paul helps us to understand what this fruit is. And if you are that person that is interested to know what is that fruit, please join me as we go to uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 5. Paul helps us to understand that fruit, which is that fruit that God is expecting us as his children, as his people, that he gave his life for to bear that most important thing that should be coming from us that when he calls us home he says yes this is the th they, they, they were able to bear this fruit Galatians chapter 5 and we read from verse 22 the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Listen. The Bible is not saying the fruits of the Spirit. The Bible is saying the fruit of the Spirit is love. And the manifestation of love is joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's how love manifests itself. There are not different fruits. The fruit is one. A mango tree does not give many different fruits. It gives one fruit, and that's a mango. It may be much mangoes, but not different kinds of fruit. And the fruit that God is expecting from us as Christians to bear is the fruit of love. Love. Turn with me from uh, in First Corinthians chapter 13. If you would want to uh, better understand why I say the fruit of the Spirit is love. Paul continues to help us from verse 4. He helps us to understand that love suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love, it does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It uh, is not provoked thinks no evil, does not rejoice in, in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and that is love. Paul helps us to understand love. So when the, in Galatians the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And it's man, love manifests it's of in joy, in peace, long suffering. The question today you would want to ask yourself are you bearing that fruit of love? When God looks at you, does he see love from you? You may want to ask yourself how does it connect maybe we we'll again turn to our text in John chapter 15 and we see how Jesus after explaining about our responsibilities our obligations as Christians what he goes around to explain about this fruit he ends up describing it as love Let's read again from verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears much fruit, he prunes, that may bear 
more fruit. Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. And as the branches cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Verse 8, mark it. By this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, his, <laughs> he begins with bearing fruit. Now he comes to the point of telling us what that fruit is. And that is love. And he ends up giving us a command. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and your joy may be full. Verse 12. This is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. He ends up giving us this command to love one another as he has loved us. Why? Because that's the fruit that is expecting from us the fruit of love. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. Now, let's ju just take this time to think about it. Love, when you talk about, when we, when we think about the issue of love. Why is it that we sometimes struggle in this area? Why is it that many of us, however much we know it, we know that we need to love. We know how important it is to love. But yet, we sometimes struggle in this area. And I think Jesus helps us to understand Number one, love. Actually, think about it. To some of us who still struggle understanding that love is the fruit that God is expecting from us. Think about when Jesus spent his time here on earth. What was the command that he left for us as a church? The command. To love, to love God, and to love one another. Think about how Jesus dis, uh, told his disciples. How will they identify them? They will identify them if they love one another. Think about what Jesus, how Jesus demonstrated his life here on earth. Giving, laying his life for us. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. This entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is just a demonstration of God's love for humanity. How God loves us. And therefore, he commands us to love because he has demonstrated it. He has proved it to us that this is important. This is very important. But we sometimes struggle in understanding what love is. And that's why if you love this verse of John 
I believe you also love the verse in 1 John 3.16. If you love John 3.16, please open also John, 1 John 3.16. Jesus explains what love is uh, through his apostle John. You know, we, when we don't learn from Jesus, then we miss out the whole issue. So Jesus says uh, through his apostle John in verse 16 of First John, By this we know love, because he laid his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. This is how we know it. And therefore, because he has demonstrated it, and therefore we also ought to lay our lives for our brethren. That's what love is. And that's where things become tough. That's where people are not willing to do so. People are willing to be Christians, but are not willing to lay down their lives for others. They are not willing to humble themselves. They are not willing to, to sacrifice what belongs to them for others. But this is what God is requiring from us. This is something that God is saying, this is most important in Christianity. This is what we are meant to do. This is what we are meant to be. This is what identifies us as his disciples. Do you have love? You see, going back to uh, First Corinthians chapter, uh, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, we see now Paul. You know, in in that church in Corinth, people were, we, we, we may call it, this was a spiritual church. People were exercising their gifts, but Paul, when he looked at that church. He saw something missing and he had to, to remind them. And that's what I think this service is all about. To remind us of what is important. Because Paul was seeing, yes, I see people who are desiring to serve God. I see people who have these gifts. They, they are seeking to, to, to exercise their gifts. But yet they are missing out the most important thing. And what is that? He begins from chapter 12. But let us first start from verse 1 of chapter 13. Though I speak with tongues of men and, and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding uh, brass or a clang symbol. And though I have gifts of prophecy, and understanding of all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I can move the mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods and feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it proves me nothing. Brethren, it proves us nothing to do anything for God minus love. Let's think about it. We love serving God. We love ministering to people. We love exercising our gifts and that's good. But if the motivating factor is not love, then God is not counting it. How sad it is for us to reach before him and he says, there's nothing. I don't see anything good from you. And yet you, you say, I did this, Lord. I prophesied. I healed the sick. I did this. But he's saying, no. You never followed my command. 
you never believed my command to love one another. Friends, love is what this world is seeking for. Why does God want us to bear this fruit? Because this is what matters a lot. The world around us is seeking for this fruit of love. You know, we always struggle to say, people are not changing. People, people are not coming to Christ. Why? Because they are not seeing this fruit which attracts them. I tell you, love attracts us to God. Attracts us to the people. The only thing that makes you special before the world is that love. And many people end up giving their lives to Christ because they, have, they are experiencing something they have never seen. And they are like, what makes this person so special? And yet, right now, if you could picture your church, if you could picture the churches we have right now, could we say that the, the, the outside people identifies them as churches that love people? Or maybe there are churches which help people, that's good. There are churches which do miracles, that's good. But how, but how important it is to be identified as a church that loves people? How important it is for your family to be identified as a family that loves people. How important is you as a person, whether you don't have anything, but to be identified as a Christian who loves people. That is something God is speaking to us this morning. The call to love. He's calling us to love. He's calling us to love. He's saying, just give a break. Think about it. Is what I'm doing as a result of love. And as I'm concluding this morning, if you are there and you really say, I really want to love, but I don't know what to do about it. I don't know. I don't know how to bear this fruit of love. Already Jesus is giving us something that we could learn from. First of all, in John chapter 15, he's telling us, abide. You cannot bear this fruit unless you abide in him. We can't bear fruit, this fruit of love, unless we abide in the God of love. So one of the challenges why we Christians are struggling to bear this fruit is because we are not abiding. We are not abiding in his word. We are not abiding in him. We are giving ourselves distance from him. There's no way we can bear this fruit. Also in Galatians chapter uh, that Galatians we read, chapter 5, we see that the it is the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of the flesh. Some of us who call ourselves Christians have not yet gone to that level of living in the Spirit, of walking in the Spirit. We actually have not been born of the Spirit. And it is difficult for you to say you can ever bear a fruit when you have not yet understood what it means to live in a spiritual life. It's very difficult. So therefore, as we conclude our service, if you really desire to bear this fruit of love, which is most important, which the world is seeking for, Remember this, please. It's about the Spirit of God. If you have not really chosen to give your life to Jesus, and you are just saying, 
as long as I go to church, as long as I'm living, reading my Bible, as long as my parent is, my family is a Christian family, I am okay. It's beyond that. It's beyond just being good. God is requiring us to live a spiritual life that will enable us to bear this fruit. And even for us who are already walking in the spirit, we need to walk step by step in his footstep. You can't live a life that is separated from Christ and you think you can bear that fruit of love. As we are finishing, think about it. If we have love, think about how beautiful this world would be. I don't think the riots would be in America right now. When you see those people protesting, racism, racism, that's an indicator that love is missing out. If you have love for one another, racism will never find any place. If you have love for one another, this government would not struggle for us to put on masks. If we have love for one another, we would enjoy this life. And even the Christian, even the non-believers, even though they may not understand us what we believe, but then they would do, feel they want to be around us. Do you think the people around you are experiencing the fruit of love in your life? Do you think when they look at you, they can enjoy that love from you? This world is sick. It needs love. So many suicide. People are, are committing suicide. Why? They are missing love. They are missing love. This world needs love. And that love comes from God alone. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you that you would give us this time, Lord, to just talk about your love to talk about that thing that matters a lot you know many times we concentrate on so much and we forget what is most important and that is love to love you with all our hearts and to love our brethren with all I pray Jesus that our lives will be set for you. We will be set to serve you. Our lives will be just there to, to make sure we, we bring out this fruit that you are expecting from us. And that is to love you. And that is to love our, the people that you have created in your own image. And that is to love the things that you love the most. We pray that Father, we will, we will put a pause and think about in which way are we loving in Jesus' name. May God bless you so much. Thank you for uh, this time uh, to, that you have given to listen. Please continue listening until uh, we are able to come together again. Services. God bless you.
calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. Save God, spread the heavens wide. Same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. You take the faithless one aside and speak the word. You are mine. You call the sinning. was crucified is calling us all by name you are calling us all by name calling you're calling you're calling us to the cross in that you're calling you're calling you're calling us to the cross jesus you're calling yes you're calling you're calling us to the cross. You're calling. You're calling. You're calling. You're calling us to the cross. Same love that set the cup is free. Same love that opened us to see. It's calling us all by name. Calling us all by name, same God, same God has spread the heavens wide, same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. only this morning Jesus always you knock at our doors in situations in our lives Lord you remind us about your love you remind us Lord of the things that you have planned for us the things you have set apart for us just as you have set at as a part holy and acceptable acceptable before you jesus and we we bless your name for this time and i pray that lord um, will continue to call us and lord will continue to be responsive to your calling every day that passes by and help us lord to be very sensitive to you jesus we worship you and bless your name 
bless everyone that's just taking their time to bring all their cares and burdens before you this morning wherever they are pray that may you be enthroned in the praises of your children this morning we love you and we bless your name and because we pray all these things in the beautiful name of our lord jesus christ amen god bless you